Once again, we thank everyone for taking time out of their busy schedule to fellowship one with another in the spirit of love, peace, and unity, fellowshipping. All right, who wants to open up in prayer? Oh, I do. I forgot. <laughs> oh, y'all gonna volunteer, Brother Price? <laughs> He's not ready for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't jump on him yet <laughs> Yo, yeah I, yo, ease him into this <laughs> yeah, i need a little i need a little more grooming <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> we're so simple over here that it's 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 unique once again heavenly father we thank you we love we adore you we thank you for this time this opportunity that you've allowed us just to go all the way through this day just to make it to this part as we open up our hearts and minds to receive this word by love and by faith applying to our lives and taking to a world that is good holy and beautiful for that is the essence of your creation as you created us we thank you for the word that we're about to share through the holy spirit we thank you for using us for signs wonders and miracles our gift and our talents we thank you for keeping us in the supernatural we thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for those who are here this word. We thank you for all those who are going through trial and tribulation, that you open the windows of opportunity, bless them with abundance and prosperity, bless over those who are suffering, that they suffer no longer, bless over those who have lost loved ones, that you comfort and touch their heart, bless over all the churches in the world. We all teach and preach the same thing, to be in one accord, one with another, that there be no division amongst us. We thank you, Lord, for these things. This is our prayer that we offer to you. Amen. 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 All right. Praise report testimonies, by the ways. Everybody should have a praise report. <laughs> Ooh, can you share that one again, Lily? If you don't mind. Uh, if you don't mind, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I have been wondering, uh, you know, looking for a hot spring near mm -hmm. Vancouver that is free of charge. Yes. And uh, today, we happened to be driving around in a certain area and I told uh, Sudi that I, I saw it on Google that there's this thing that is kind of like a hot spring. And mm -hmm. then, so we drove there and then we walked into, uh, we had to hike in like what, one kilometer? No, 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 five minutes walk. Yeah, five minutes walk and then we so, found it. Yeah, so we walked past the hotel that has the hot spring pools that if you want to use, you have to be a uh, uh, you know, member. Yes. Kind of yeah. mm -hmm. So we walk past the hotel and further in, it is actually the source of the hot spring that Ooh. they have. So Here. there is actually an overflow pipe towards a small pond at the side, and then we, we are able to use it for free. Good job. See there? <laughs> Call those things to be not as though they were. Now mm -hmm. faith is the substance of those things. Now they're starting to come together, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, the weather, uh, the weather has been very cooperative. Good. Well, <laughs> let them have what? Dominion. Dominion over what? All of the earth. Don't you try? Hey, I love the weathermen, but when it comes to us, you're the weatherman. You're the weatherman. <laughs> We play with the rain. Well, think about it. My brother Yeshua, Jesus, in the book of Mark, was asleep on the hind part of a ship. And these disciples, all 12 of them, some of them fishermen, was in a storm. And you remember what they do? They woke him up. And what did he do? Peace. Be still. Yeah. Be still. And then he turned and looked at him and said, what? Where's your faith? So, as you guys give the testimony, the reason why I love the testimonies is because you're sharing your faith, you're sharing the supernatural, you're sharing what the word of God can really do based on greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world, and not looking at all the other stuff as obstacles. So when you say, I want good weather because it's too hot, you don't agree with everybody that it's too hot. <laughs> Make sense? Yes. Yeah, in the uh, crowd. That's right. Don't follow. You're supposed to be a peculiar people. All right. We're on page 353. And the title, The Totality of the Kingdom. Oh, I love it. Yes. Yes. You know why I love it? Because all y'all are kingdom citizens. Get your, get your crowns and your tears right. <laughs> Straighten up, kings and queens. <laughs> there you go. Question number one. When a brother or sister 
acts insanely, they are offering you an opportunity to what? Them. Heal. Heal them. Heal okay, them. we'll buy that. Uh, what else? Come on. Love okay. them. What? To love them. To love them. Absolutely. Keep going. It starts with a B. Ends with a G. Two S's in the middle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Blessing? Blessing! <laughs> oh! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know I messed y'all up with that one. <laughs> Two S's in the middle. <laughs> Wow. That was a good, <laughs> keep you on your toes, right? <laughs> good job, Anson. I, I was actually thinking, was it, is, is it harassing? I said, oh no, it's not harassing. <laughs> that was good, see? That way I get you, I get those cobwebs to thinking. Anytime somebody is before you and they're not thinking sanely, in other words, they're complaining about this and they're complaining about this and everything's negative. Here's your perfect opportunity to do what? Bless them. There's the blessing. And as you bless them, you get a blessing in return. Question number two, who is the mirror in which you see the image of yourself as long as perceptions last? I know that's a deep question, so I'm gonna say it again. Who is the mirror in which you see the image of yourself as long as perception lasts? Now, I'm gonna give you a hint. Go back to question number one and look at the one, two, third word and the fifth word, and it'll give you your answer. <laughs> Brother or sister? You, come on now. Your brothers and sisters are the mirrors of the image. So when this is why we try to keep people out of judgment. Because when you begin to judge, we say, look, make that your mirror. That'll keep you out of judgment. Because when you start judging, you stop your blessings. Because it's the perception of lack. It's the perception of separation. It's the idea of attack. You notice that? And it starts so gradually until when it gets to full force, now there's a full force war going on. So now for us to prevent that, who is the mirror? This is the mirror. Everybody who I see is brother or sister, that's me. Does that make sense? And as long as I keep them as me, I stay in love with me because I love me. Everybody love me, don't you? Uh -huh. Thank you all, I appreciate y'all loving me too. Y'all were supposed to say, I love me, pastor. <laughs> Love yourself first. Yeah. Love you, Pastor, but I love myself more. There you go. I'm good with that. Hey, Melissa. Hello, God. Welcome. Praise report testimonies, by the way. <laughs> like always, uh, uh, Pastor, every day, every moment every is, uh, is a praise report. <laughs> I know. And that's what it's about. When you get into this, you see the power the real power, not that other stuff that they that we've seen. We we get into some real stuff. So thank you for just that right there alone. We're on page 353. And the title is The Totality of the Kingdom. And we're on question number three. What is the only way to withdraw from the illusion? Let me ask a pre-question to this. What do you think the illusion is? When we talk about illusion, what's an illusion? Illusion is not your truth. It's not. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come, oh, come on. Some Y'all better holler with me. Is, Thank you. Is yes. it the separation from God? Is the illusion? <laughs> come on. Boy, y'all. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. Yes. In order to withdraw from the illusion, you have to understand who you are. Mm. And then you have to understand what is the truth. The truth is you are whole. The truth is you don't need anything because God gave you everything. Mm. You lack for nothing. Mm -hmm. When you lack, 
That means there is something inside of you that you need healing from. Good job. So the illusion is, I don't have enough money. Y'all see where I'm going? Yes. When we change the thought, everything outside of that changes. Why do people attack? Oh, that's too easy. That's because too easy. they are in conflict. <laughs> yes, they are in conflict. Right, with who? Themselves. With themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now, if they're in conflict with themselves, what do they think they're going to do to you? With all your niceness and your love and your cheerness and they your hate happiness. you. Oh man, you're getting ready to get crucified. <laughs> Why are you happy and I'm in state? What makes you better than me? And this is what people be not, and we're not talking about everybody. We're talking about just the, the few that come to us so we can learn to plant that seed of love to say, you know what? Hey, you're just as loved as I am. There's no separation. We ain't got to go to war. Matter of fact, here's the shirt. Boom. I got a whole closet full of them. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah. Also, people attack out of fear. Mm. They attack out of fear. You only have two emotions, love and fear. So when there's an attack, it's out of what? Fear. Why? They judged you incorrectly because they didn't see you how as a child of God or vice versa. Your affirmation, ooh, I am the will of God. Everybody say that. I am, I am the I will am of God. The will of God. Everybody understand that meaning? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Whenever you deny a blessing to a brother or sister, you will feel deprived because denial is as total as love. It is impossible to deny part of the sonship as it is to love it in part, nor is it possible to love it totally at, at times. You cannot be totally committed sometimes. Denial has no power in it itself, but you can give it the power of your mind whose power is without limit. So now this is where people deny their power. Oh, pastor, I can't do that. Oh no, that, that's, well, that's just you. You do that. No, that was for Jesus. So that was for Buddha. That was for Allah. That was from, that was from whomever. That's just not for me. And then they limit themselves because of what? What they've been taught, what they've been shown, what they've experienced. Now, that becomes the illusion. That becomes their what? Truth. So now, how in the world could they ever change their mindset based on that perception? Very difficult. So when you're trying to plant a seed of telling them, hey, don't deny that power. Don't deny first the mind, which is powerful, which is the Christ consciousness, and then the words that are connected with that, which are hard. So a man speaking in his heart, you're going to get that. If you use it to deny reality, reality is gone from you. Reality cannot be partly. That is why denying any part of it means you have lost the awareness of it all. Yet denial is a defense, and so it is appreciated as capable of being used positively as well as negatively. Used negatively, it will be destructive because it will be used for what? Attack. This is why we're seeing all the stuff that's happened, not only in this land, with the race, with the police, with all these things we see, not only here, but with the stuff that's happening over in Afghanistan and other places that are that are going through civil wars or these type of things, you know, it's because of what? The negative. They use the negative so it's an attack. But in the service of the Holy Spirit, it can help you recognize part of reality and thus appreciate all of it. Mind is too powerful to be subject to exclusion. God is about inclusion, not exclusion. You will never be able to exclude yourself from your thoughts. When a brother or sister acts insanely, they're offering you an opportunity to what? Bless them. Their need is yours. So now when you're before that person who might be resistant or might be in judgment or whatever, their need becomes yours. 
You need the blessing so you can offer to who? Them. That makes sense? There is no way for you to have it except by what? Giving it. It is better to what? Give than it is to what? Receive. <clears throat> this is the law of God and it has no exceptions. What you deny, you lack. What you deny, you lack. Not because it is lacking, but because you have denied it in another and therefore not aware of it in yourself. This is why they attack. Every response you make is determined by what you think you are and what you want to be is what you think you are. What you want to be then must determine every response you make. You don't need God's blessing because that you have forever, but you do need, but you do need yours. The ego's picture of you is deprived, unloving, and vulnerable. You cannot love this. Yet, you can very easily escape from this image by leaving it behind. So this is where the illusion comes from, where people start building up these images. So now the way you do it is you leave it behind. So if there's a problem, you do what? Go to the root of the problem. Yes. You are not there, <clears throat> and that is not you. Do not see this picture in anyone, or you accept it as you. All illusions about the sonship are dispelled together as they were made together. Teach no one that they are what you would not want to be. Ain't that something? Let me let me talk about that for a minute. People don't realize <clears throat> that if they get into a situation that is a bad experience and someone comes along and they begin to innocently in their mind share this story that is not positive, what do you think begins to happen? That's teaching. What are you teaching that other one if they don't correct that? What happens if they agree? When two or three agree, <clears throat> it's going to be what? May manifest. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a great example. Doctor walks in, says, okay, Brother Meekins, got stage four cancer. What does Brother Meekins say? Does he agree with the doctors? Does he agree with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. You agree with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, doctor, for your prognosis, but being the Holy Spirit are going to go do this, this, and this. Remember we did that? Mm -hmm. And then we came back when they gave us six months and we came back four months and they said, wow, we can't find a trace of it in your body. <clears throat> it was because of the perception. <clears throat> so do not teach anybody what you don't want to be. Your brother and sisters is the mirror in which you see the image of yourself as long as perception lasts. So when people start saying, oh, I don't like homosexuals, now what did they just do? They just separated themselves. They just cut themselves off. This is why it is important to stay out of judgment of your brothers and sisters. And perception will last until the sonship knows it as a whole. You made perception and it must last as long as you want it. Illusions are investments. Oh my goodness. And boy, people invest in a whole bunch of junk that they don't need to invest in. People invest in worry, stress, depression, sadness, anger, fear. They will last as long as you value them. <clears throat> oh, Pastor, I just can't get it. Well, there you go. What's going to happen tomorrow is going to be more of that and more of that. So let, let's suck that up. Uh -huh. Let's stop that. Yes. You say illusions are investments. I thought we just learned that illusions are something that's not real. It is not real. But look at the people who think they're real. I should have worded it a little different. My apologies. Mm. Those are those who are still in that world. They invest in that. How you doing? Oh, I'm sick of the dog. What? You compare your wholeness to an animal on your sickness of health. That's the best description you can give me other than God made me whole. So look what they invest in. Pastor, I can't, I can't get ahead. I just can't get a break. Look what they're investing in. And as and long you, as, go ahead. And now you can't. And now you can. And now what you've done is you've built up a habit. And humans are habitual. 
very habitual creatures, don't like a whole lot of change. So now that you continue to build up the habit, now these are the illusions are investments. And then when somebody comes along like us and starts telling a positive feeling story, how much pushback do we get on that? A bunch. But. Oh, man. To the point they ready to fight you or unfriend you. And you trying to help them. Because they're, they're comfortable. Because they're comfortable in their mess. They're comfortable in their mess. And then they want to tell everybody how messy they're comfortable in it. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Lily. So we have a, a friend that is always saying that he has a lot of uh, health problems. Health problems. And we we have been, you know, encouraging him and then, you know, saying that you have to think positive and blah, blah, blah. And one day he, he screamed at me, can you stop lecturing me? <laughs> I was like, okay, I walked off. <laughs> because they don't want to hear that. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know my pain, blah, 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 blah. And they go, well, you don't know the healing of, of who we know. Go ahead, Lily. <laughs> And I was, I was quite, uh, I was, I, I was not angry, but I was quite naughty. So I told Holy Spirit, you watch him. <laughs> <laughs> he rejected me. <laughs> <clears throat> but that lesson was to teach you. Okay, I can leave. I can meet you right where you are, because I planted the seed. Because he got to the point where he got irritated. But here's what happened. You'll stop saying it, and all of a sudden, everybody else around him starts saying it. He'll hear it on TV. He'll hear it on the radio. He'll see it on social media. He'll see it everywhere. It'll be plastered everywhere to the point he'll go, okay, Lily, you win. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. And yes, go ahead. Oh, sorry, you can go ahead if you have something to say. No, go ahead. So go going back to the investments here, then, instead of for us, because we know that illusions are not real. So illusions are something like, oh, I'm sick as a dog or like, oh, I'm actually poor or like, or like, oh, everyone hates me or so on and so forth and those things. Mm -hmm. I guess we are able to invest in something that is real. Yes. So our investment is in God. God was, is the only thing real. Was it you that, was it you that gave me the uh, analogy of the uh, car? Um, you know, you can you can go buy a brand new car or buy buy a car or any car, mm -hmm. and you have you've never seen the car. You know, you it could be a total car that you, you really normally don't see, but as soon as you got one, you you your mind is invested in that. So now everybody and their mama got one. You see, I mean, that everywhere, everywhere you turn, there mm -hmm. somebody has the same car. Yep, you remember absolutely, and that's what well, they do. So our investment is God, Holy Spirit, because that's real, because we understand that we tap into that, we go into step two because he does the work. We just need to ask, believe, believe that what we ask is already done. Yes. So when, when, when we say illusions are investments, it's mm -hmm. because people would invest their time, their mental state, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the energy into creating even illusions. Yes. That's what we mean. It's not about money, Anson. It's Correct. about spending their lifetime maybe just focusing on the illusions. Yes. Whereas unlike us, we are spending our time, right? Finding God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We build in the spirit world. So, great question. And I, again, I should have worded it a little bit different. No, it's all good. Values are relative, but they are powerful because they are mental judgment. The only way to dispel illusions is to withdraw all investment from them, and they will have no life for you because you will have put them out of your mind. In other words, we don't. In other words, when I begin to understand what the Holy Spirit was teaching me before I taught you, I was this high in debt, and every time I went to my account, it was like, oh. Who else took money? Oh, God. Who else sent, sent me a, a notice? Oh, how many past dues do I got? Oh, God. What was I building up? Wall. A big wall. What was I investing in? The problem. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at, okay, God, you brought me this far. Why would you 
drop me off and leave me hanging. You've never left me hanging. So what's the problem? He says, you're the problem. What? <laughs> Get out of my way so I can work. Mm -hmm. I said, well, how am I in the way? He says, you prayed to me and asked me to fix it. But then when somebody came and asked you about it, you complained to them. You can't serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. Choose. Ooh. Okay. I, okay. You got me, God. That's why you're God. <laughs> got it. <laughs> While you include them in it, you are giving life to them. And that's what I was doing. I was giving life to the past due. I was giving life to the, the mortgage company, the light company, the water company, everybody. It seemed like the more I focused on it, it seemed like it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where I started drinking and drinking and drinking and to the point where I couldn't drink it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, uh, Pastor, that is a, a problem for people. Mm -hmm. uh, who are addicted uh, to anything. Absolutely. You know, so the thing that uh, by, by doing whatever they're addicted to, it will, it will erase their problem away, but it's not. It does not cause it more. It's, and that was, that also was an investment in the illusion. Mm, yeah. Trying to drown that problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm except there is nothing there to receive your gift. The gift of life is yours to give because it was given you. You are unaware of your gift because you don't give it. You cannot make, this is not you guys, you cannot make nothing live since nothing cannot be enlived. Therefore, you are not extending the gift you both have and are not know your being. All confusion comes from not extending life. All confusion all confusion comes from what? Not extending life, because that is not the will of your creator. You can do nothing apart from him, and you do nothing apart from him. Keep his way to remember yourself and teach his way, lest you forget yourself. Give only honor to the sons of the living God and count yourself among them gladly. You all are sons of God. So when we talk about the sonship, this puts you in the kingdom with what? Kingdom privileges. Um, does it, pass, does it, pass, go ahead. Pass a question. Yes. Um, somebody who is uh, mourning because they lost their loved one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they kind of uh, they kind of like lost interest in living. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what should we do to to this person? Ensure them that their loved ones are more alive and present with them than they are when they were alive. And if they're Christians, it's very simple where you can teach them what Jesus says. He says, I came to give you what? Eternal life. Eternal. So you begin to teach them from that aspect. And then you begin to teach them can you kill a spirit? Can a spirit die? Anybody? Can a spirit die? No. So no. if a spirit can't die, what happens to the spirit? Spirit is energy, correct? Mm -hmm. So energy is just transformed. <clears throat> so you tell them they finished their mission. Be happy. Rejoice. Everybody in the heaven's host rejoice when you croak. <laughs> they really did. All your loved ones are waiting for you. <clears throat> So if so you there's, think, gotta be, so there's gotta be a, a different way of saying, cause it's like, you know, you hear this a lot that uh, they're in a better place and, and the wording should be, their mission here is done. Yeah, More and they really are. And they, you can honestly say they are in a better place, truly. Because yeah, but God gave you free will. Hate, people hate that phrase. True that. But it is the truth because they are still in their misery. They're still mourning because of attachment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with the attachment. And there's nothing wrong with the mourning. There's nothing wrong with it. I got you, Lily. Give me one moment. There's nothing wrong with the mourning. Don't get us wrong. We're not trying to say just, you know, it's okay to cry. 
But when yeah. people stay there for a very, very, very long time, they stop living. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And life keeps going on and they have to recognize life keeps going on. Okay. But it My also teach them how God operates. Mm -hmm. And they might not understand this, but they will give you confirmation. You can say something similar to this. When you think of your loved one, they come before you or they're next to you. And they will say, you know what? I either had a dream about my deceased wife or deceased husband or my deceased grandmother, whomever, or I smelt their cologne or their perfume or I felt them touch or I had a, it'll be something that they cannot explain that jogs the mind to let them know that the loved one is there and trying to get their attention. They might even start seeing numbers like all of us, like 1111, 222, 555. It could be a numerous of things. And here's the biggest thing that we should have started first. When you're dealing with people who are mourning, the first thing you really want to do is ask the Holy Spirit, what can you do to soothe this brother or sister's broken heart? We read your mind, Lily. <laughs> Go ahead. So um, for me, uh, I, I, I have to be thankful to my mom because mm -hmm. I have the personal experience with my mom's passing. Yes. So now, nowadays I can share with others that look out for certain signs that, you know, maybe uh, those people who pass away, they, they give you certain signs and you know that they mm -hmm. are around you. Yes. And you can have uh, a conversation. You can ask them questions and they will answer you. Yes, indeed. They give you signs, right? You know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's good, good that you have a personal experience to share with them. Absolutely. And we've all experienced it. We've all, we've all held spirits in the body. And then when we left, the person passed, oh, I wish I would have been there. Well, it wasn't for you to be there. You was holding that spirit in there because of the energy. Me as a pastor, when they would call me to the bedside to pray for them, I would ask them two questions. Are we praying them into the non-physical or are we, we praying for a healing? Mm. Which one are we doing? I, I go two ways. Makes no difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true it's true pastor yeah and one suit two occasions <laughs> yeah 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 we have to ask that question yes so when i ask that question because nine times out of ten they've already put them in the ground oh they've already they've already did the obituary they've already mm -hmm. i'm just there i'm normally there just for formality <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. I am being quite honest. So when I asked them, are we healing? Are we, what are we doing? <laughs> and they completed with the answer. <laughs> so, in other, so in other words, you say, you say, uh, when you go into to the hospital room, even though the person is alive and sitting there, uh, barely clinging on to life, you're, you're asking them, are we praying for healing for this person? Are we, are we, uh, when we do, it's going to finalize their obituary for you right here on the spot. What are we doing? Simple as that. No, I mean, you ask the family members, not the person. <laughs> I ask him too, what you want? <laughs> <laughs> He's go here or they go here, what you want? One for living, two for dying. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> one of them did like this. I was confused. <laughs> Sometimes I will ask, uh, you know, the, the universe or ask God to, to help this person to make the best yes, arrangement. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we don't know which one is better. <laughs> I oh. mean, for the Buddhists, when they see that, you know, you're sick and you're like trying to go, we will say go. So you don't have to suffer in this physical body. So. Exactly. exactly. And everyone has the ability to heal. Everybody everybody not just limited to the preachers or or the reverends or the bishops or the elders or whatever they call themselves everybody everybody has the ability okay <clears throat> uh honor only honor only honor is a fitting gift for those whom god himself created worthy of honor 
and whom on whom he honors. Give them the appreciation God accords them always because they are his beloved sons in whom he is well pleased. That means everybody, everybody. You cannot be from them because you are not apart from him. Rest in his love and protect your rest by loving. But love everything he created of which you are part. Or you cannot learn his peace and accept his gift for yourself and as yourself. You cannot know your own perfection until you have honored all of those who were created like you. This is where you get your Bible first, where it says, treat one another like you what? Want to be treated. Want to be treated. Exactly. Do unto others if you do unto you. There you go. One child of God is the only teacher sufficiently worthy to teach another. Why? Because we have the whole mind. We know who we are. We can see them whole when they see themselves sick. This is why they push back when we begin to plant healing. There is a, if there was a, there was a story over in the book of Mark where my brother went to this man who was at the gate of Pythias and it was five pillars and every season an angel of the Lord would come down and stir up the water. Now, to give you an idea, this was kind of like a lottery. So whoever ran up first and got into the pool when the angel of the Lord was in it, got the healing. Now, the man's situation was he was a paraplegic. So instead of his friends taking him to the top, they left him at the bottom. So when my brother Jesus comes along, he asked the man, do you want to be healed? Here's the man's response. Every time the angel of the Lord come down and stir the water up, we're going to call him Joe. Joe, run up and steal my healing. What did Jesus ask him? Do you want to be healed? What did the man begin to do? Tell him every reason why he couldn't get healed. And Jesus still healed him. Get it? One teacher is in all minds and he teaches the same lesson to all. This is why we sound like a broken record, especially when it comes to unconditional love. He always teaches you the inestimable worth of every son of God, teaching it with infinite patience, born of the infinite love for which he speaks. Every attack is a call for his patience, since his patience can translate attack into blessings. Those who attack do not know they are blessed. They attack because they believe they are what? Deprived. Give therefore of your abundance and teach your brothers theirs. In other words, <clears throat> remind them that they are also kingdom citizens and they are wealthy. One of the most difficult thing is to try to teach a person who is sick healing a poor person abundance do not share their illusion of scarcity in other words don't join in the story uh, humans are really good about one upping each other in other words i remember i used to tell a sad story and then one of my friends would come along and his story made my story oh my goodness he just blew it away. And then another person would come along and his mother died, killed both our stories. And then another person come along, his mother was killed in a crane class and his daddy died of cancer a year later, killed those three stories. Look what we were attracting. Now all of us are holding up, telling the same story and we can't get nothing done. <laughs> so the, 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 the better way to do that when you're in that situation is to just leave. If you can't leave, turn the negative story into a positive story. Cannot. You'll be outnumbered. No, you cannot. <laughs> Here's what you do because I've trained you well. You've all been trained with one, a couple of words. Is this a satisfying thought? What is their response going to be? No. Nope. No. They can't lie to, they can lie to you but they can't lie to themselves and they got to deal with this is not a satisfying thought. So now how do we change this thought to a better feeling thought? 
all you're doing is posing a question and now they got to wrestle with how do I do it? Cause I really don't, I really don't like, I really don't like this thought because why this thought is not making me feel what at peace, joyful, happy. And at the end of the day, everybody wants to be what loved. So now what is the satisfying thought? Something loving. So there's no way you can have the number. You are a child of God, girl, please. <clears throat> All I need is one of you and you will affect millions. Two of you, you affect the planet. Why do you think Jesus sent his disciples two by two in four parts of the world? That way they could cover the whole globe with the same teaching. Mm. Attack could never promote attack unless you perceived it as a means of depriving you of something you want. Yet, you cannot lose anything unless you do not value it and therefore do not want it. This makes you feel deprived of it and by projecting your own rejection, you then believe that others are taking it from you. This is where the attack comes from. You must be fearful if you believe that your brothers and sisters <clears throat> is attacking you to tear the kingdom of heaven from you. This is the ultimate basis for all egos projection. Being the part of your mind that does not believe it is responsible for itself and being without allegiance to God, the ego is incapable of trust. Remember we told you what projecting was? When people are in fear, they try to project their fear onto you. Mm. Either, they either do it physically or they try to do it energetically. You walked into a room and there's tension, you feel that what? Tension. To the point you begin to scan that room to find out what? Where the tension's coming from. Mm -hmm. And then you either try to get the heck out of there if you're able, or you try to fix the tension. Holy Spirit will give you something silly to say, and it'll break the ice. Go ahead, Lily. I usually try to fix it. We, we don't have to fix it. For us, when we're there, the, the situation will just kind of dissolve and get better. That's when you know you're good. See, you're like me. I just oh. know that all I need to do is walk in the room. <laughs> That's all I got to do. I walk. Here's how I walk in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smiling. <laughs> I just walk yes. in. I don't care yes. what happens. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, just like Melissa and myself, right? When we are facing a <laughs> 300 over... Oh, and we were just laughing and, and everybody was like, why are you so happy? I said, what's that? And then, <laughs> and then Lily, Lily has to remind me, eh, hey, don't look so happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's sad when you got to look miserable around other folks. And I say, I ain't doing that. I'm not joining that. If they're going to be miserable, let them be miserable by themselves. I'm going to get my blessings. <laughs> <laughs> because they'll project and then there's what they'll do. They'll get miserable and then try to huddle you up. And then I've seen, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm going to close my eyes because I don't want nobody on, on Facebook. I don't want nobody <laughs> standing up talking about them. But when I was in the church houses, I would hear certain people when they would walk into the building, all of a sudden they start, hear that sister go, mm, look, you got that hat on. Mm, thanks, y'all. And I would be like, <laughs> what? But they call themselves Christians, but they didn't stab their brothers and sisters in the back because of whatever reason that's so silly that it don't even make sense. Mm. And you go, wow, really? And you wonder why your blessings can't come in. Mm. That the, makes sense? the best part about, about mm -hmm. us being that powerful, at least, at least I can say for myself, is sometimes you'll go into a room, mm -hmm. you can tell the room was negative. Yeah. But you had to be in that room, so you're stuck with them anyway. Um, thanks, meetings. But with that, <laughs> you eventually you can feel the change uh, mm -hmm. because you tell yourself, why do I need to be negative? Right. And the longer we stay in that room, eventually the guy that's negative is going to be basically like sitting in the corner by himself. Yep. <laughs> and yep. eventually... He's going to feel so lonely to a point where I like, I'm going to join in and I'm going to bring a positive story and they end up being one of us. After. Absolutely. 
You remember when you took the flight and the gentleman yeah. was on the flight? The energy was so tense. And here comes Anson with all that love, all that wisdom, poured it all on that man. He couldn't get him, get this love off of me. I, I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> to the time he landed, he, oh, I love you, Anson. <laughs> And the whole flight was totally different. That even the kids calmed down. All of them were sleeping peacefully. <laughs> and normally, when you go on the flight, is nah, nah, bah, 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 and they're fussy, and especially a long flight. Mm -hmm. And kids are very energetic. Mm -hmm. You got to give them at least sixteen hours. <laughs> they gonna go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Projecting its insane belief that you've been treacherous to your creator. It believes that your brothers and sisters who are incapable of this as you are, are out to take God from you. Whenever a brother or sister attacks another, that is what they believe. Projection always sees your wishes in others. This is where jealousy comes from. Mine for yours. If you choose to separate yourself from God, that is what you will think others are doing to you. Isn't that so true? As we, as we begin to talk about it and we start seeing it with people that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, even we'll go back to our own selves before we got to this place. At least let me speak for me. <laughs> you are the will of God. Do not accept anything else as your will or you are denying what you are. This is why I'm always emphasizing that you are God. You know that you didn't create yourself, but you are in the image and the likeness given what? All power. Every place the sole of your foot should tread upon, you have dominion over in that land. You can decree and declare a thing and it shall be established. You can call those things that be not as though they were and they will be established. You have now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Y'all better say amen on that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Man. Deny this and you will attack, believing you have been attacked. But see the love of God in you, and you will see it everywhere because it is everywhere. When you wake up in the morning, you tell yourself, I love me like God loves me. How do how question? How do we wake up? How how do we affirm our mornings? I come I, into this day. Into this day in God, in God, with God, God, by God, God. And God. Come on. Yes, Lily. I live. <laughs> I, I always say, um, I um I see no, I am love. I am love. So yeah. I want to see love. Yes. And today we saw two two girls, right? Two women, two two young women together. Uh -huh. Yeah. So he looked at me and then I looked at him and I said, Well, at least they are in at least they are happy. And then he said, Yeah, at least they are in love. So it's they're like, in love. And you didn't get in judgment. Wow. You didn't get oh. well, after one year of your teaching, we better <laughs> get over that. We're getting and we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Pastor told me put my face on there. I can't do it. <laughs> It got to be a better way, Pastor. <laughs> well, I'm trying to help you shorten the process. <laughs> that image will get out of your head real fast. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to attack somebody if your face is attached to them. Thank you. <laughs> it really is. It's impossible, man. Oh, see his abundance. See his abundance. See his abundance. In everyone, in everything. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> in all the abundance we need right now, we live in abundance. <laughs> I love it. Indeed. And you will know that you are in him with them. They are part of you as you are part of himself is lonely when his sons do not know him. The peace of God is understanding this. There is only one way out of the world's thinking, just as there was only one way into it. Understand totally by understanding totality. Perceive any part of the ego's thought system as wholly insane, wholly delusional, 
and wholly undesirable, and you have corrected, correctly evaluated all of it. This correction enables you to perceive any part of correction as wholly real, wholly perfect, and wholly desirable. And that's what we all want. Mm -hmm. wanting, this, <clears throat> wanting this only, you will have this only. Wanting this only, you will what? Have this only. So don't want that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And given this only, you will be only this. The gifts you offer to the ego are always experienced as sacrifices, but the gifts you offer to the kingdom are gifts to you. They will always be treasured by God because they belong to his beloved sons who belong to him. All power and glory are yours because the kingdom is his. Questions, comments, concerns? All good? All good. All right. The next lesson we'll be talking about unbelievable beliefs <laughs> i think i think that that lesson is not for us pastor no but it's for you to go teach others so that they can understand <laughs> all right let's do a group prayer tonight y'all good for a group prayer are y'all going to leave me hanging again? <laughs> I might have to give y'all a 30-second head start. <laughs> okay. How All do right, you know, me. Pastor? Huh? We, we, did, we, we, we never leave you hanging. We just... I know. I'm, I'm teasing. I just pray long, that's all. <laughs> all right. On the count of three, we're all going to pray together at the same time. One, two, three, go. Thank you, Father, for this blessed evening, this praise birth. We thank you for opening up in our hearts and minds, receiving this word by love and by faith, applying to our lives and taking to a world that is good, holy, and beautiful. We thank you for loving wisdom. We thank you for prosperity, abundance. We thank you for health and healing within our bodies. We thank you for the mind of Christ, which is the perfect mind of freedom. We pray as we lay down this evening for our peaceful dreams. We pray for our neighbors, our neighborhood, those less fortunate enough, the homeless, the sick, and shut in. This is our prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, pa amen, Pastor. Amen. Yes! Good job. You guys did a great job. We love you all. Prayerfully, you'll have a great week. I will be connecting with each and one of you in the spirit, regardless if I talk to you or not. It will not matter. I will see you. You will see me. <laughs> me and Melissa are really good at this, so we'll definitely play. So if you have any questions, any concerns, by all means, definitely hit me up. Love you all. Have a blessed evening. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.